welcome back to the Spoonie and Caregiver Life Podcast with me, your host, Jordan Banderas. And before we get started, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any episodes of the podcast. And let's go ahead and get into today's episode. Now, I've been doing some research about how many people don't have health insurance. And it turns out that since last year, 28 million people lost their health insurance or don't have it at all. Now, I started diving into this rabbit hole of statistics for a few reasons. Right now, me and my wife don't have health insurance because I switched jobs like I mentioned on the previous episode. And times are rough around here. I'm not going to lie, and that's to say the least. And this all got me to thinking how many other people are struggling with the same issue. And it's clearly a lot per the statistics. I mean, like $28 million. And that's because COVID really hit families hard. And so many people became unemployed. And it also got me thinking, how did people afford their prescriptions and primary medical care needs? Because there are some states that have a specific guidelines for who qualifies for state aid. Most people don't. And as you have, I mean, as you have to be dirt broke or on the boundary of making the cut pretty much. Because we looked into it just to see if we can get coverage for the month that we won't have insurance. And unfortunately, the system is clearly broken and it has been for a really long time. Now, this situation of being uninsured smacked me in the face the other day and it was hard. I still have the mark. (laughs) Because my wife went to pick up her prescriptions. She uses a non-profit pharmacy that she drives 25 minutes to. Yes, She goes that far out of her way because we need to look for the lowest prices. Probably a lot of you are going to understand that. Now, she's on on one specific medicine that she absolutely has to have. Like, she cannot go without it. When the pharmacist rang up the order, she apologized before she even got to the register. She was all like, she she saw us walk in and she was all like, I'm sorry. And I was like, for what? And that's because she's very familiar with Katie as she goes in all the time because she gets the best prices. Now, the total for just three medicines, just three, was $550. The sticker shock was enough to take our breath away. Literally, I was like, what? These were only three out of 12 medications that we needed for the month. Luckily, we had prepared for this situation because I had been looking for a job for a while, so we prepared, right? But not to this extent, to be honest. And when my wife went back a few days later and another medication was $350, just one. That's a patch that controls her anxiety and seizures. She wasn't able to get it. This is this is the first time that it has happened. Because we had to prioritize prioritize what were the most important medications to get for her. And it quite frankly it infuriated me. It made me so freaking angry. Because, and people have asked me, people that know this, what I'm going through right now, have asked me like, why didn't you get Cobra? <laughs> Let me tell you why. When we received the paperwork for Cobra after I left my previous job, it was only $1,700 for one month. That's a house payment. A house payment that we didn't have on top of the current one that we are paying right now. So when I looked at the paperwork, I got a knot in my stomach, but mostly I got angry. Angry for those who can't afford basic care or life-saving medications. Like, 
we almost did because, like I said, we didn't prepare to this extent. And I have been thinking about it all week long. How are people on Social Security making it? You know, you read stories of older people eating cat food because they can't afford real food. I have seen that. And and also, one thing that happened later in the week, I saw this TV show where a diabetic man didn't go for medical treatment for an open ulcer on his leg and had to get his foot amputated. All because he had no insurance. Now, our our family also does a homeless outreach program on Saturdays where my in-law, my father-in-law goes to feed the homeless. I went last week in the pouring rain. I, w- I wanted to give back. So we got to the location. We pulled up in front of the outreach medical clinic. Sitting in, sitting in front of the clinic was a man in a wheelchair with a coat, no shoes, and an IV bag hanging from a pole. I'm not making this up. His feet were starting to turn blue. I have no idea how long he had been there for or what had brought him to this point in his life, but my heart sunk. I was able to hand him a sack, uh, sack lunch and Katie gave him a blanket from our car and wrapped his feet up so they will hopefully warm up. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to help him any further and will wonder about what happened with him. And, and believe me, I get it now. I got a slap of reality right in the face. I am blessed. I had enough money to buy almost all the prescriptions that we needed. Our lives aren't that bad. And we are truly blessed. We have a roof over our head, food in the fridge, a car to drive, and warm clothes to wear, especially now in the cold. Never again will I complain about what I do or don't have. I know that that's easy to say. But I've definitely had an awakening in my life. I don't know how or where the system needs to change. But it isn't working the way that it is currently set up. Just like me, a lot of people are going through the same thing right now. And I'm also blessed because at my new job, the insurance is going to start in a few days on November 1st. So I got lucky. So... If you struggle to buy or find your medications or even see a doctor, my heart goes out to you. I get how hard it is sometimes. I get why you're stressed. I get why you're frustrated. I get why you're angry. Because you can't take care of yourself because of the price of medications. Or you, or like me, you can't take care of, of, of the person that you love because of the price of medications. So I get it. And that's why I wanted to share this story because this is what's been happening to me for the last few weeks. And like I mentioned, I got a sticker shock. And I'm still like angry about that. I'm frustrated and that's why I wanted to talk about it. Because millions of people are going through the same thing right now. And it's not fair. Because like in many, many cases, we get a chronic illness and we can't afford our medication, so that adds to the burden of being sick. So it's not fair. But that's pretty much what I wanted to talk uh, on today's episode. I wanted to let that out. I wanted, I wanted to tell you what it's like right now, because this could happen to anybody, literally. So so thank you again for all the support, all the, all the feedback, all the all the stories that I have received from you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. And don't forget to share, like, and subscribe because we are growing and it's all thanks to you. So don't forget to follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And like I said, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And if you want to share your story, you can actually post it on the community on Facebook, the Caregiver Life, the Caregiver and Spoonie Life community. 
or you can send it to me at the spoonie and caregiver life at gmail.com and i'll leave you like always always take care of yourself and have a great day